Well, good morning, church. If you guys would, go ahead and stand up with me. I'm going to read our call to worship this morning. It's going to come out of Matthew 16. It's verses 13 through 18. It says, Now when Jesus came to him and into the district of Caesarea Philippi, uh, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So if you guys would, go ahead and turn around and tell somebody that you're happy to see them this morning.
You can be seated. Good morning, Burlington Baptist Church. I told them in the first service it looked like a Labor Day crowd. Well, you guys look a little bit more full in the place, so it just might have been a slow start for some people, but we're glad we're in the Lord's house. Amen? Amen. It's a good day to be here. Hope that you have been able to be a part of our Bible studies this morning. Uh, we have them every Sunday. If you don't have one, make sure you can check out at the desk or uh, with the office and we can make sure that you're a part of one. If you're a guest today, we always say welcome and we want to make this time so special for you. If there's anything that you happen to need, just go out in the foyer. We have wonderful people that serve in our first impressions and they will be able to point you or get you to the place that you need to be. But just thank you for being uh, with us today, not only for worship, but uh, make sure that you make it a point that as the ongoing activities of the church start to pick up, and we're going to talk about them here in a second, uh, that you are part of those too. This Wednesday night kicks it all off. Kids Rock starts back in, groups start meeting, it's going to be in full force. So let's hear a round of applause for that. Yeah. I realize this is the last big travel weekend. Everybody's got to start settling down, but we're looking forward to it. This week in Kids Rock, that also means something very important for Baptist everywhere. That means that there's a meal before Kids Rock. Uh, you guys laugh, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Baptists march on their stomach. So is, uh, that begins this week. If you want to be a part of that and you want to uh, make sure that you join us for the pre-meal before all the activities, uh, go online on the church site. You'll be able to link on there and sign up for that. Um, if you don't have the ability to do that, just call the church office. We'll make sure that you're put on the list. But it's just a great time, great time of fellowship and breaking bread together as we get ready to move into those programs. A lot of things going on in the life of church. One of the other things I want to bring up is that the choir is going to be starting back up September the 7th. Hopefully, those of you that can sing, which does not include me, hopefully those of you that can sing have already got it on your calendars. You're going to come and be a part of that. Uh, Mark Maynard is going to be leading us in that, and it's going to be a wonderful time. So make sure that uh, if singing is in your repertoire, um, because Harold and I aren't going to go out and do solos, are we, Harold? No. Uh, there you go. Hey, never hurt my feelings. There's a reason why the Lord called me in the student ministry. It was not music ministry. But uh, make sure you're a part of that. If you've got any questions, uh, call us at the office, and we can uh, put you in touch with Mark, and he can answer those questions. Now, I have to tell you something about your pastor. Everybody thinks he's this nice, easy-going guy. But today, he tried to get me in trouble. And it was right out there before he comes walking up and he goes, hey, it's Margie Hambrick's birthday this week. And he says, we need to make sure that we uh, uh, draw attention to that. And I said, okay. He said, that's great. Then he said that she was 101. Is that what you said? <laughs> She's only going to be 90. I mean, it's all right. For no, no, he didn't say that. But he's trying to get me to disclose a woman's birthday. And I'm not going to do it. So, Margie, happy birthday to you. I know that on two at 90 years old, she's an amazing woman. We do pick on each other a lot, but I really, really am taken back because she has just now started her 16th year of working at um, the elementary school up the road. And it is amazing that at 90 years old, she keeps on moving. And I think that that has to do that the authorities are looking for her and she's trying to keep a look. No, I don't know that's it. But, but Margie, just so glad that we're going to be able to celebrate that with you, and I hope you have a great birthday. As we get ready for worship today, I'm going to ask my friend Greg to come up. He's going to share a little bit about some uh, opportunities we're going to have for service. Mr. Greg. I know you're getting tired of seeing me up here, so I'm not going to come up after today for a while. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have uh, a request for upward basketball. This Tuesday at 6.30, uh, where they're going to have a, a, a makeup time to uh, um, be evaluated. If your kid wants to play, bring them up at 6.30. If you can help out, uh, Dan and Carl would need help on that evening. Uh, all you got to do is be able to count. And you don't have to count very far. Uh, 10, 15 maybe is top. So I think anybody can do it. 
Uh, and then uh, the yard signs that you may have had at your home, you can bring them up to the activity center and just drop them off there by the door and Dan uh, will pick them up and uh, take care of them. Uh, now, the next thing I wanna talk to you about is uh, our blanket drive. I told you last week I would have you some more information. Um, we're targeting about 350 people that are living in the state parks. There's three state parks in Ken Eastern Kentucky that they're living in. And there's 350 residents. There's gonna be another 119 trailers coming up to Eastern Kentucky here in the next couple weeks. It's gonna start getting cold. Laura and I have already um, take a few requests for blankets to different places already. So we wanna try to get ahead of that. So we're going to try to get uh, 350 to 500 blankets. Uh, that could be uh, uh, full or queen size blankets if you can bring them up and just drop them off there. We will use gently used. Now I wanna clarify gently used. So Ms. Jewel Smith's gently used will take. My gently used that I would put underneath the tractor when I'm changing the oil or, or, or doing that, we're not gonna take. So let, let's, let's, let's remember what gently used is. And then, uh, then we've got a, a big exciting thing coming up. We're gonna try to make a hundred uh, blankets for children. Uh, and those are the ones that you tie knots in, you know, the double felt ones, I guess you've seen it. All you men shaking your head no, yeah, oh yeah. All you gotta be able to do is cut, you can do that. You can tie a knot in them, it's no big deal. And best of all, you can come and help us pack them in the crates or whatever we're gonna distribute them in with hats, gloves, socks. We're gonna put a whole big thing so I could use men to doing all those things too. Uh, the date that we're gonna start making the kids blankets is September the 17th. It'll be downstairs in the old fellowship hall nine o'clock to three, come and help make blankets. If you've got extra uh, felt around to make those in, you can bring that too. We'll also be doing it on Wednesday evening, the 21st, 630 to 730 when you drop your kids off. If you don't have a Bible study, women's study, maybe you could come help us in. Uh, there'll be more things coming out. This is in conjunction with the, the craft group. Uh, they're going to be doing the ones with the blankets. So if you need uh, any information, talk to Rhonda or Marty. Um, they can get you to that. Next <laughs> is uh, I'm leading the team down to Eastern Kentucky on the 12th of September, which is a Monday. So I'll be there the whole week of through the 16th. Uh, if you guys, get any of you that can come, you don't have to stay the whole week. I'm breaking it up to where I know it's been close to the last uh, trip to Western Kentucky. If you can come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that would be great. Or if you could be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that would be great. And we're only doing it in Jackson, Kentucky, which is less than three hours away. And some of you, I've seen you drive, you can make it in about two and a half. So uh, you can contact me, Ken Ford, Brad Rathman, any of the guys that you see, and we would love to, uh, to be able to start this ministry in an area that uh, are really in great need. And I think that's all I've got to say, so if you all would pray with me. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for today. We are grateful that you have given us a cheerful and giving heart. We thank you so much for the opportunities to serve you, to serve in your people. Be with us and to be considerate at all times. People are in of all kinds of pain. Help us to help them. Point us in the direction you want us to go and let us be your hands and feet. Help us to, to further your kingdom and, and giving each person the gospel and making disciples so they can go out and tell someone. Thank you so much for every family that's represented here today. That you just be with them. Guide those out that are traveling, guide them gently out of harm's way and bring them back next week to worship you. Thank you for everything that you've given us because really and truly everything we have is from you. Amen. Well, this may not be a Labor Day crowd, but this is certainly a Labor Day praise team. Uh, so if you guys would go ahead and stand with us. We're going to keep singing. Uh, we're going to sing a new song this morning. 
Uh, Danny's not here to yell at us for doing it, so uh, sing it with us if you know the words. If not, they're on the screen. This is a house of worship. And this is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name And this is a house of healing And our hearts are full of faith you have our full attention and you have the final say and come alive in the name of jesus come alive in the name of jesus this is a house of miracles and we bring everything to the feet of jesus everything in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. And there's resurrection power. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over Even the coldest grave and Come alive in the name of Jesus Come alive in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles We bring everything to the feet of Jesus Everything in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles, and I still believe you're moving, I still believe you're speaking, God, I believe you're working, all things for good, I fix my eyes on heaven, God, I receive your vision, God, I believe you're working, all things for good. speaking. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. And come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. you guys can have a seat we're gonna sing a, a more familiar one now so the words are still on the screen you guys even though you're sitting down sing it with us you're worthy of every song we could ever sing you're worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. In Jesus, the name above every other name. In Jesus, the only one who could ever save. And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to the 
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. In Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me guys. There's no one like our God. Amen. If you have a Bible, I'd love for you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We finished up Luke chapter 6 last week. And in the last couple of verses of Luke chapter 6, Jesus was talking about our foundation, whether we're building on a foundation on the rock, who is Jesus, or we don't have a foundation. And when the storms come and the judgment comes, one will stand and, and one will not. And uh, so I just got to thinking about how important our foundation is individually and as a church. And so I'm going to do a kind of a short series on, it's called Building a Healthy Church. And uh, at the end of September, uh, September 25th through the 28th, uh, we're going to have a few days of revival. Brother Randy McFerrin will be here with us. And I hope you'll be praying for that. Uh, I hope you put that in your calendar. Uh, and plan on coming, maybe spending a, a day, a week uh, fasting for that time of revival. Uh, we had a great time of revival last year and looking forward to that this year. But this morning we're going to talk about our only foundation, which is Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I'd love for you to stand and we'll honor God's Word together. Let me ask a quick question. Anybody uh, struggle with your prayer life? couple of you, yeah, well, how about lying? <laughs> just kidding, just, just kidding. Uh, Wednesday night, we're going to do a, uh, we're going to start a study on prayer. Uh, we want to be a praying church. Uh, if you need some help in that area, 
We'd love for you to join us. Brother Michael and I will kind of co-lead that. We'll be downstairs. There'll be lady studies, kids groups. Uh, in a few weeks, we'll have a, a men's group starting. Uh, we'd love for you to come out and be a part of that. Uh, but we, we want to certainly be a praying church, and we, we know that the Lord hears our prayers. And, and most of us struggle a little bit with our prayer lives from time to time, if, if we're honest. So uh, join us Wednesday night. Uh, we'd love for you to do that. And I uh, appreciate all the ones that have been helping bring stuff to Eastern Kentucky and are going to go help. Appreciate Greg and Ken organizing those trips. Uh, got lots of feedback. People are thankful that we're coming to help, and, and I appreciate your willingness to do that as well. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take heed, take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today that you have provided a way for us to be saved and your work on the cross, your resurrection, your ascension, your, your life is the foundation of the church and uh, we pray that we would build our church and our lives upon you and we pray that if there's anyone here who's never turned from their sins and came to faith in Jesus that, that they might know how much you love them, that they might turn and be saved today. We pray that as a church that we would not only be built on your foundation, but we would be building with the best things in our lives. Help us, Lord, help us to examine our hearts today. May your spirit give us eyes to see with clarity. Lord, may you minister to the needs in this body and uh, those listening online. We, we pray that uh, you would remove any distractions that we might be able to hear from heaven. Lord, speak through me, I pray, and get all the glory, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. So we're just gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about a healthy church, and I, I just want to say I I love the the church that that Jesus purchased with His blood, and uh, it's a great privilege to to be a, a pastor. The Lord's allowed me to do that for twenty some years, and uh, I, I want Christ Church to be healthy, bi- biblically healthy. I want us to be beautiful in His sight. Uh, we're we're described as the bride of Jesus, and. And when he comes back, I, I want us to be a, a beautiful bride. Uh, I, I want us to uh, reach our community, uh, impact this community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, I, I, when I first started preaching, I was greatly influenced by the church growth movement. Uh, I graduated from Southern Seminary with a degree from the Billy Graham School of Missions, Evangelism, and Church Growth. And, and so I was kind of big into church growth. I I read church growth books, and uh, I, I wanted the, the church to, to grow. I was focused on numbers, and if I were honest, I, I, I might have put more emphasis on numbers than I did on the health of the church. And then I realized that, that Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, uh, Jesus said, I'll build the church. And uh, that's a, a marvelous statement, that Jesus said, I'll take care of building my church. And, and that doesn't mean that we just sit back and, and let Jesus do His thing. Uh, no, we, we're to, to labor. I, I want to labor as a faithful minister. I, I want to preach the Word. I want to feed the flock. I, I want to pray for the Lord's blessings. I, I want to do what God's called me to do. And, but I realize that it's Christ who builds His church. And church, we have a mutual responsibility in this. We're to go and make disciples and baptize and teach and and, and so God has given us a responsibility, and we just, we just need to do what the Lord told us to do. We don't need any type of new scheme or, or mandate. Uh, we're just to obey His instructions. And His, His instructions for us is pretty simple. Uh, he lays those out to us in the Word. And uh, listen, God wants us to have a healthy church. And so He has given us instructions, and we'll look at some of those instructions in the coming week. Uh, before we dive into 1 Corinthians 3... 
I want us to consider this morning our only foundation. And uh, as far as the context, uh, the church in Corinth, Paul had planted this church. Uh, you can read about that in Acts chapter 18. He goes to Corinth, he preaches the gospel, the, the church is planted. Uh, but the church had some issues. Uh, they, they were immature. They were off, often divided over the, their, their favorite preachers and their cliques and different groups. Uh, we, we read a little bit about that in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 3. Paul says, you're still in the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? I mean, we have to see our fleshly nature come out sometimes and recognize it in the church. Verse 4 says, For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? So we're to die to the flesh, we're to live for the Spirit. Verse 7, he points out, So neither he who plants, which is what he had done, he had planted the church, nor he who waters, like Apollos, is anything but only God who gives the growth. Verse 9, he says, we're just, we're, we're God's fellow workers. It's not the messengers that is important. It's the, the message, the message of the gospel that's of most importance. And then we get to verse 10, according to the grace of God given to me. Yeah, according to the grace. I, you know, we sing about the grace of God. I, I'm thankful for God's grace that saved me. Listen, I didn't deserve it. One guy early this morning was sitting back there talking to him before service said, and he said, I don't know why God even puts up with me. And I'm like, brother, I feel the same way sometimes. It's grace. It's grace that saved me. I was a self-righteous teenager. I, I don't know what you might have been, but it was His grace, and I, I'm amazed at His grace and humbled by His grace that would allow me to do what I do. Uh, man, I get to preach the Word and and uh, shepherd people, and I sometimes pinch myself to think, God, you, you let me do that every day, and that's, that's just grace. But Paul says, according to that grace given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. That skilled master builder is the Greek word architecton, and it's the word from which we get architect. It's the ideal of a builder or a designer. And that was Paul's specialty. He laid foundations. He planted churches. He went to places where the gospel had never come, and he would share the gospel and plant the church. And so he established this church in Corinth on his second missionary journey. Uh, you can read again, read about it in Acts chapter 18. He stays there about 18 months, which is a long time for the Apostle Paul when he plants a church. And so he would preach and teach the gospel. He would lay the foundation. He would get the church going with the realization that someone else is building upon it. And so he laid the foundation. He would try to raise up some elders to lead the congregation. Sometimes he would send Timothy and Titus and, and others to, to go to those places and encourage the church. He, he provides us with a little bit of warning there at the end of verse 10. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. And that word builds is a present active indi indi ind indicative, which means it's a continual action. It's a continual work. The, the foundation has been laid, and we are to come behind and build upon the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul wanted the church to be healthy, and so he knew that it was imperative that they understood that there's only one foundation, only one. And so we'll start there this morning, the one foundation of the church. And that one foundation is, is verse 11. It's a great verse to, to memorize. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only foundation for His church. If a church is to stand the test, it must be built upon Him, it must be built for Him, it must be built through Him. Now, some in Corinth, they, they, they were trying to uh, make the foundation a specific preacher or a religious system or their works and various things. And today, people are trying to build their church upon the, the cleverness of their entertainment or, or their music or the giftedness of the preacher or how comfortable they can make people feel or, or you name it. 
That's not what Paul said. He said there's only one foundation, and he said everything must be built upon Jesus Christ. And so Isaiah 28, 16, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am the one who has laid a found- as a foundation in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. And so listen, for us, Berlin Baptist, Jesus Christ must be our foundation. Because we are His church, and He is the the chief cornerstone. He is the senior pastor. He is the chief shepherd. He he is uh, the foundation. That song said He has the final say. He has the first say and the the final say. We're, We're not to be built upon a preacher or singing or a building or anything else. Jesus Christ alone. And listen, not just the church. We need to build our individual lives upon Jesus. And so is, is Jesus your Lord? Are you building your life upon Him? Not only does Paul proclaim the only foundation of the church, but then he begins to discuss the many fabrics of the church, the materials that we use. Verse 12, Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw. He, he lists really two categories of, of fabrics or materials. There's the, the high quality, gold, silver, and precious stones. And then there's the inferior quality uh, fabrics or materials, wood, hay, and straw. Th- these materials, I, I don't think they represent our, our wealth or our talents, but rather the believer's faithfulness, the believer's faithfulness with what God has given them. And so, as we think about these verses, the question that comes to mind is, how, how do we know? How do, how do I know what fabrics, what materials uh, I'm building with, if I'm using? Well, let me give you a couple of sub-points. First of all, quality is more important than quantity. Quality is more important than quantity. Consider the, the size of these materials in verse 12. You could have a whole truckload of hay, and it wouldn't be worth as much as a, a block of gold. It's not the, the quantity, it's the, the quality that's important. And, and I'm afraid that there are some churches that are building big buildings and drawing large crowds, but their fabrics, the fabric that they're using may not be of much value. It may not last. You see, the fabrics that, that Paul's talking about is, is, represents our works. Now, church, we're not saved by works, are we? No, and we don't work to maintain our salvation. We're saved by grace through faith. But Ephesians 2.10 says we're His workmanship, created unto Christ Jesus for good works, which He prepared beforehand for us to walk in them. And so we're His workmanship. We, we are saved by faith, but it is a faith that works. It is a faith that produces good works. And so... God wants us to give Him our best, to build with the best materials, and He is certainly worthy of our best. And I look around and I see some of you who regularly give God your best, and uh, most of you have heard about the four bones uh, in every organization. I, I don't know if I've shared that here or not. Four bones. Uh, first, the wish bones. They're, they're always wishing somebody else would do the work. And then there's the jawbones. They, they do all the talking, but very little of the work. Then there's the knuckle bones, and they are the ones who knock everything. And then there's the backbones. And uh, those are the ones who carry the brunt of the load and do most of the work. And, and uh, we have some of those. In the past few years, I've seen some of you uh, who are pouring your lives into the work of the Lord and building with good fabrics, and I praise the Lord for you. And then and when we talk about fabrics and materials, I, I want us to be careful. It's easy to get caught up in religious, busy work and external activities and church programs and projects. And, and we might think we're using good materials while God might consider some of our stuff as, as wood and hay and straw. And you say, well, why is that? Well, the second sub-point is that our motives are often more important than the magnitude of what we do. Our, our motives, why we do what we do is important. 1 Corinthians 10.31 So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory 
of God. Whatever you do, do it for God's glory. And that's the key. Are we doing it for our glory or are we doing it for God's glory? And so, again, why we do something uh, is probably more important than what we do. I mean, I could give you some examples. I mean, let's say that you, you could give $100 this morning generously and with joy, and, and God sees that as gold. Or you might give $500 and give it grudgingly, and God might see it as straw. Or you might say, well, that's more. It doesn't matter. It's, it's the motive of which we give. You, you, we're going to start by Kids Rock this week. You, you might be a Kids Rock worker, and, and yet you may hate Wednesday nights. You just do it out of obligation, and it may be hay or straw. Now, on the other hand, you may say, well, this is an opportunity for us to impact kids with the gospel and, and build families for the kingdom of God, and God might see that as silver. It's the same way with preaching. I, if I'm trying to just please you, it's, it's just hay. But if it's to please God and to reach the lost, then, then it's gold. And, and listen, what may look like on the outside is gold. It, it may be straw to God. 1 Corinthians 4, 5 says that He knows the, the motive of the, or, or the, the purposes of our heart. And so what are you building with? Are your motives, are they selfish or selfless? Are they Christ-exalting or are they self-exalting? And, and listen, I struggle with this sometimes. Because sometimes I do things and my motive is bad. And I have to say, Lord, forgive me for having that kind of attitude. And I think if we're all honest, one of the biggest problems in our churches today is that we're, we're so selfish. And sometimes we become consumers, and uh, we want everything to be pleasing to us. And listen, it's not about us, is it? Listen, I, preachers are the worst at this, so I'll preach to myself. We, we're all selfish. It, it's not about us. It's His church. And so we need to evaluate our motives and, and ask, are they self-exalting or Christ-exalting? It's important to ask ourselves because verse 13 says that the fabric is going to be revealed by fire. And so the fire that will test the churches, verse 13, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Each one's work will become manifest. And so we're not fooling God. He knows the difference between gold and hay. And so Paul noticed the, the Corinthians were living carelessly, they were not maturing, they were very worldly, and, and so he reminded them of the coming judgment. He says, for the day will disclose it. Well, that day is referring to the, the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, if you want to turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul talks a little bit about this day. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 9, so whether we're at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the, the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. This is a judgment that will take place, I, I think, after the Lord's second coming. It's not a church, it's not a judgment for our salvation. That, that's already been settled, hasn't it? I mean, we're saved by faith. Not of works. We're saved by faith alone. Therefore, Romans 8, 1, therefore there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So this is not some judgment that the believers are going to have to stand before us to decide if they're, they're saved or not. No. Uh, but the Bible says that we'll, we're all going to be called to give an account for our conduct or our stewardship after we've been saved. And we will be judged on the basis of our faithfulness in using our spiritual gifts our talents, our time, our possessions for the Lord. And so this judgment will be, will concern, be concerning rewards or, or lack of rewards or loss of rewards. And it says that the works will be revealed by fire. Now fire is a symbol of testing in the Scriptures. So verse 14 says, If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives... He will receive a reward. 
Well, that's what we want. We, we, we want that. And again, it's not talking about being saved. Uh, we don't work for our salvation. But it's about our rewards, our, our works. And if we build uh, with the best we have and with right motives, we will receive a reward. But if we build with our leftovers, then it's wood and hay and straw. And verse 15 says, If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. You ever been around fire? You, you know the smell of it when you go in the house? Before I was a preacher, I, I was a fireman. Sometimes I'd get home, I'd bring my clothes inside. That wasn't good. That was, that was a bad move. They stink. As a matter of fact, you can take your clothes off and go get a shower, and you still smell like fire. That's, that's how bad fire smells. And Listen, some of you might be going to heaven smelling like fire. You're not going to forfeit your salvation because you didn't earn that to start with. But it, but it's kind of bittersweet that your works are going to be burned up. And now Some of you will say, and I've heard people say, so, hey, I'll just, I'm just trying to get in. Well, let me say this. As, as a pastor, my chief desire is that you're saved, that you've repented of your sins and you've trusted in Jesus. I, I want you to be saved. I want you to receive the, the gift of eternal life. and uh, That's the most important thing. But I sure hate for any of the sheep to, to get to heaven smelling like barbecue. <laughs> now listen, our church, our, our God, is, He's so good. He, he gave us His very best. He allowed His Son to come and die for us. He gave His best, and He deserves our best. Now listen, even if there wasn't going to be any rewards, that's just a kind of a bonus. Even if there was going to be no rewards, He would still be worthy of our very best. But he does tell us about these rewards. And some of you have been building with leftovers, and you've been doing that for a long time, and it's all going to be burned up. And, uh, and so we all need to take heed this morning. And the fire will test each one's work. And none of us are going to fool God. We might fool one another, but there's going to be no facades when God looks at our works. And I was thinking about uh, the seven churches in Revelation Revelation 2 and 3, there's, there's these seven churches. And Jesus, he, he sends a message to the churches, and He, he uh, commends some things in those churches, and then He points out some things that's not pleasing. And, and most of us are familiar with the, the seventh church, uh, the church of Laodicea. We remember it because it was the, the lukewarm church. The thing about the church in, of Laodicea is, is they, they thought they were gold. Revelation 3, verse 17 says, For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, I need nothing. Uh, that, that, that's what they thought about themselves. And, uh, but they didn't fool the Lord. Uh, he tells the truth about their spiritual condition. Verse 15 says, I know your works. You're neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. And of course, he says, because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to spit you out. But, but verse 17, for you say, I am rich, I have prospered, I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. The lukewarm Christian is often comfortable and complacent and, and doesn't realize his or her great need. And I just want to say it's easy for us to become lukewarm over the years and I mean, as a church, we got these nice facilities. It's nice and cool in here. We're paying the bills. We don't have any debt. And it's easy to become complacent. And yet, listen, church, are you listening to me? There are countless people in our community who have never heard the gospel. If you don't believe me, you go out with me sometimes. And we'll knock on doors of people who have never heard of Jesus. Don't know what Jesus did. Don't know how to be saved. Don't even know they're lost. And yet... Sunday after Sunday, lots of our churches are full of people who are pretty comfortable. There are countless people. They've never seen the light of Christ shining from the church. The church of Laodicea, they lost their vision. Jesus said, you're, you're blind. You, that's a good question. Can, can we be blind? What do we do? 
The answer is pretty simple. We just, we just get back to the blueprints, don't we? And particularly the Great Commission. We go and make disciples. We, we go and be His witnesses. We, we go out in the world and be salt and light in our community. We invite people to the church. We share the gospel. We make disciples. I mean, God's told us what to do. And so the foundation has been laid. The foundation is Jesus Christ. And everything is to be built upon Him. And again, before we finish, back to, to verse 10 there at the end. Paul says, let each one take heed how he builds upon it. And so before we close, just, just put your blinders on for a minute. Don't, don't consider your neighbor or the person. This yourself. Are you taking heed to how you are serving the Lord? Are you giving God your best? Or are you just giving Him some leftovers? And listen, you, you don't have to impress the pastor or anybody else. The Lord knows. And He's going to test our works with, with fire. And so Paul is concerned about getting the foundation established. Uh, but he knew that others would come along after him and, and build upon that foundation. And, and we want to have that kind of perspective for the future. Listen, church, if the Lord tarries, future generations will be building upon what we leave them. And, uh, and so we need to have a, a vision for the future. We, we need to have God's vision. And listen, God loves His church. He, he has a great vision for His church. He, and, and, and listen, we, we're a blessed church. You know, we, we, have, we, we could have a whole Sunday school class for 90s and above. And we got middle age, we, we got student, and we're blessed. But that, that is a blessing. I've been to churches that didn't have any young people. And so the future looks bright, and uh, I, I can tell many of you have a desire to bring glory to, to Christ, and, and those things are exciting. Listen, I, uh, Christ is building this church. I, I find it a, a privilege to uh, be a part of what God's doing and making disciples, and, and many of you are going on mission, and you're serving others, and, and that's, that's awesome. Here, here's our challenge this morning, church. Our challenge is to make sure we're building on one foundation, who's Jesus Christ, and to make sure that we're giving God the best that we have to offer. Each one of us is taking heed to how he or she is building. Listen, here, here's what I found to be true. If we make Jesus uh, our foundation, we make sure he's the foundation, we're building on Jesus. And listen, we give God our best, he'll take care of the rest. And uh, he'll build his church. And so I wonder, as we prepare to have an invitation, I wonder if God might be speaking to some here this morning. And Maybe, maybe you're here without Christ, and uh, you, you need to get that foundation laid. That, that's imperative. And you might say, what, what's the big deal? Listen, you're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. Sin's a big deal. Sin separates us from God. We sung about the holiness of God. He, he is separated from our sin and our sin leads us on a, a path to hell. And Jesus has come, and He came and lived a sinless life, and, and He went to the cross and took our sin upon Himself. He died as our substitute. He died, He was buried on the third day, He arose again. He has ascended back to heaven, but He has offered us the forgiveness of our sins. He's offered to restore our relationship with the Father and and uh, give us all these promises of His Word. And He invites us to follow Him and to build our lives upon Him. That, that's of utmost importance for anyone here today outside of relationship with Jesus. And as I look around, I, I figure most of us are saved. And maybe you've been building with wood and hay and straw and Maybe you've been using those materials for a long time. And uh, maybe you have some precious materials in your life, but you use those for everything else. The only thing that's going to last in the end is our labor unto the Lord. And, uh, and so, listen, so, some of you need to repent and say, God, I've, you gave your best for me, and I'm not giving you my best. Listen, you, it's okay to repent. 
it's okay to recognize that, for God to put his finger on that in your heart and repent and ask God to help me to start building with gold and silver and precious stones. Listen, you'll never regret that. You'll never regret it. Listen, you can't even do anything about what you passed. But here's what you can do. You can start giving God your best. Let each one of us take heed how we build. Let's pray. Father, thank you today for your word and Lord, for your church. You, you purchased the church, your bride, with your blood. And so it was not a, a cheap price. It was your blood. And we're thankful that you would save a wretch like me. Thank you for your grace. I, I pray that if there's any person in this room or online who has never experienced your grace, never understood that the cross was for them, I pray this morning their eyes would be open and they'd say, listen, I, I need to build my life upon Jesus. I don't want to trust in my stuff or anything else. Nothing good I could ever do. I want to trust in Jesus. Lord, I, I pray you might save some today. And Lord, for the good of your body, the church, I, I pray that individually we would evaluate our lives, our motives. Lord, maybe some of us look like we're building with good materials and our motives are bad and they're selfish. And Lord, may we repent of that. May you give us a, a time of repentance for all the times when we've given you our leftovers, our scraps. Lord, may we build with precious stones and gold and silver. May we build for your glory. Lord, help us to see our selfishness this morning. Help us to turn from that. We acknowledge you're worthy of our best because you gave your best for us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand and we'll sing. And you respond. And listen, if, if you're not building your life on Jesus, I'd love to talk to you about a relationship with Him. Don't put that off. Today's the day of salvation. And listen, this... Uh, you want to pray, say, God, forgive me of giving you leftovers. That would honor him today. You, you respond this morning as the Lord leads. I heard in and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin. Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Beyond your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And oh, what a sin.
Amen. So good to see you this morning, and I'd love for you to join us Wednesday night for some of our, our Bible studies, our prayer time. The choir will meet in here at 7. Uh, Elise and Mark are going to kind of meet with the choir and get some feedback and, and start working on some things. And so all of you who have that gift are welcome. And uh, if you want to build with some gold and silver and precious stones, Carl, he loves to have some coaches and... Uh, that's some good material there because you're investing in young people. And uh, Jesus had a heart for that. So uh, that'd be a good place to start maybe. And so you consider that if we can help you find a place of service. We'd love to do that. Uh, happy 90th birthday, Miss Marge. We're excited for her this week. And uh, when you get 90, I want to make sure I announce your birthday. So uh, make sure I don't miss your birthday. Uh, Terrell. And Kyra got some news that they get to bring uh, Nova home on Thursday. So praise the Lord. Y'all pray for that. That's an answered prayer. We got lots of folks that need prayer. We got some battling cancer. Uh, Kevin Bush is still in the hospital. And uh, y- Yvonne Manning, they were taking her to the emergency room after this morning. So pray for her and uh, several others. So pray for one another. Uh, If you want to give when you leave, we appreciate that. The brown boxes are for offering. The clear boxes are for the dollar club. And uh, so we appreciate your faithful giving. And pray for Danny. He's out in Colorado this week. Going to be out there in the the tent uh, with a bow and arrow. So uh, y'all remember him. And uh, Josh, would you pray for us this morning? Thank you all for leading us this morning. All right, guys, pray with me. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you for giving us all this opportunity to... Just come into your house and uh, hear your word, Lord. Lord, I pray that uh, we take this message that Harold gave us this morning and take it out into the world, Lord. I, I pray that uh, we uh, build our lives on a solid foundation. Lord, I just pray that we can share that word with everybody that we come in, into contact with this week. Lord, I pray that you're with us in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.